What an absolute palaver. Spent way too long fiddling with this body. I've used G-clamps, ratchet strap, blocks of wood, plastic shim, even string. We have a bit of exciting news on episode three of the budget V8 hot rod build. I have found a new body. So this one, as I probably mentioned in the previous episodes, is an all fiberglass 27T Roadster body. Looks really good, I think. However, I've been on the lookout for something Model A based. So if you pan with me, this is what we have found. It is a 29 Model A body. The front half of it anyway is original steel, the doors and the front cowl, but it does have a fiberglass back end. There is also a removable boot lid. So really excited to see how this looks on the chassis. I am liking the look of that a lot. That looks really cool. The body, I think, needs to come forward a little bit because, yeah, you can see there, the back end's hanging out a bit too far back. But to be honest, I think the engine may be a bit too far back as well. I think I might just stick the grill shell on and just see how far we can sort of get that engine forward. Taken a bit of time to move this engine forward a bit more. I've realised I am missing the fan, so I'm not exactly sure how far forward I can move that engine at the moment, but it's kind of like a knock-on effect. I've got the radiator there, I need to obviously tuck the engine up quite close to the radiator which then determines how much clearance I've got on the firewall and how far forward I can bring this body. I just need to get that fan really. I might try and offer up the radiator just to see how that is looking. This radiator was a purchase off eBay. You can buy these from hot rod shops and you can pay up to like a thousand pound I saw them for, for a Model A or Flathead V8 radiator. This was 180 pounds, which is just over a couple of hundred dollars. I mean, I thought it's pretty good value really for what it is. An aluminium radiator, looks pretty well made. See, time will tell, but the quality looks pretty good. It's obviously got two inlets and outlets to suit the flathead V8 motor. I did notice that bracket's actually a little bent, if you can see that. It's probably just in the shipping. Hopefully we can straighten that out without doing any damage. So let's see if that fits in the space we have. And try and squeeze it in there. It'd be sensible to take this grid out of the way, I guess, but just being lazy. Bring you in for a closer look. Seems to fit in there pretty well. It goes on the cross member really well down the bottom there. I thought these tabs might have been slightly wider because they just don't quite go over those holes. It's not much of an issue. I think I could still get a good fixing in there. And these side fixings, I don't know how these normally work. Maybe someone could let me know. 
Is there some, supposed to be some kind of like rubber isolator that goes in between those? But generally it fits in the hole really well and from the front, it looks amazing. I mean, I'm gonna probably paint that black so it looks a bit more old school. Just one other thing as well is obviously where the radiator connects to the engine, these pipes don't quite line up, but with the engine mount welded to the frame there, you've got this to sit on top of the engine mount, so it should bring up the engine, and hopefully that's just gonna be about in line. As you saw me putting the body together, there's nothing really that holds it together. So I think I'm gonna spend a bit of time and position this body exactly right, maybe get some reference points so all the door gaps are correct, etc. What an absolute palaver. Spent way too long fiddling with this body. Everything's been a bit of a compromise. The gaps are kind of good in places, not so good in places. I've used pretty much everything I can to hold this together in position. I have got G clamps. I have got a ratchet strap from front to back. I have got blocks of wood. I have got shims, plastic shims. I've got even string. Just to hold everything roughly in the right place. This door is a bit of a mess, but it lines up roughly at the top. So it looks good at the top half. However, come down, there's all sorts of weirdness going on here in relation to the frame. The front cowl is sat on the frame quite nicely. The door's up anyway, I know I need to make some kind of sill, but the rear of the body is 50 mil or so above the frame and slightly tilting down by the look of it. So I'm not quite sure what to do. I think I'm going to do some kind of structure inside this body so it stays together, then at least I can lift it on and off, move it around, move it forwards and backwards, because it's not quite squared up at the moment either. If I tie the thing together, I can get rid of all the ratchet straps and timber, bits of wood and string and everything, and the body will, yeah, be as one. You just see me cut up some square tube in there, and I think I'm sat, I'm <laughs> still actually inside the car. And I think I'm gonna put one bar from the cowl there. Fix it back to there. I'll do that top and bottom. The same on both sides, that'll be a good start. So I'm just gonna clean up this metal in here, just ready for welding. Just enough to get a decent tack weld on. So I've added this framework in here, just really crudely welded some stuff together, but it is tied into the original sort of frame of this fiberglass section at the back. Here, two places there and on the side, both ways, and then it's tied into the front cowl there. And I've done two cross braces so I can connect it to my block and tackle and lift it up. But let's just quickly see now, is anything gonna move around when we undo all these? Let's take all this off. All the ratchet straps, etc. G clamps are removed and yeah, that looks pretty good. Feeling this door is probably going to be a bit more stiff. Yeah, this door's still catching. But anyway, the body, the body is one. It's a moment of truth. The body is now suspended off this block and tackle, which goes up to the ceiling there, and it's actually completely dangling 
And my plan is to just cut out all these really bodged together old body mounts. So there's two on the cow on either side and there's one on this rear body. And I think if I cut these off, they will just allow me to tilt the body to the perfect position. Two separate body mounts and there's loads of eat, you know, enlarged holes. It's a right mess. These body mounts are just like wafer thin as well. So I'm just gonna cut all these off. Can I just say again, what a palaver, but we are getting somewhere. Just by trimming out those old rubbish mounts, it's allowed the cow to sit down a bit, which means the rest of it follows, of course. The rear of the body now follows the frame perfectly, so that's really nice. You will have to forgive, because the whole car at the moment, there's no rear suspension, so that rear end will come right up. As you can see, the frame is sort of going downhill. That body now is in the right place. I just think that radiator cowl just needs to come down very slightly, so I might trim that down, just to get it as low as we can. The next stage will be trying to do a proper final support for the floor, and I can cut out a couple of those temporary braces. So I know how much I can take off the bottom of this cowl. At the moment I've got about 39mm gap there, so I'm going to take the radiator and cowl off, push the radiator up as far as it can go, and just take that measurement again and that should tell me then what I can cut off the bottom. Got the radiator and cowl off the car and pushing this radiator all the way to the top. You can squeeze it to there's about, as a reference, 20 mil gap on this top part. That means I can cut 19 millimeters off this, which is just gonna lower that cowl 19 millimeters. Set my vernier gauge to 19 millimeters. And I'm just gonna try and use it to scribe a line. Got that trimmed down, looks pretty good. Followed the profile of the existing, so let's stick the radiator back on and then we can put the cowl back on. There, you can see where the cowl's dropped now, it's sort of much tighter fit against the radiator. There's still a little bit of play in there, five mil or so. And the cow sits a bit lower at the front, pretty nice. Well, let's just check the side view, which is kind of the reason we did all this. Has it helped? I think so. Now this is interesting. I've got this sat on the frame rail and if, I'm not sure if you can see there, but it's about three degrees. It's obviously sloping the wrong way. Three degree pitch going upwards there. And then when you bring that up to the top, it's pretty much the same. It's an optical illusion now because the whole of the car is squat down at the back. We're in Big Bertha this morning, a couple of errands to run, and we're off to the metal suppliers to pick up some metal for the hot rod build. This is just down the road from me actually, really nice people in here. This is where I come for all my long lengths of metal. Super nice people in here, very helpful, give me good prices all the time. Bristol gas supplies. It's the empty gas bowl. And the chap's just gone down to get my new gas bowl there. It was a bit heavier than the last one. Yeah. 
that's my errands run. Got the metal I need and a new fresh tank of gas. Heading back home now to the garage to do a bit more work on the hot rod. And it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day here in Bristol. Sun is coming out. These are the little gas bottles I get. A company called Air Products. They, they offer different kind of deals. You can hire a bottle and refill it. I can't remember exactly now, but I don't use obviously a great deal, masses of gas. So I, these little ones suit me quite well, which means I can wheel the cart around this get little garage easily. And I just pay to exchange the gas bottle each time. So it doesn't matter if I change it once a month or once every six months just pay the same price it's no higher fee just goes on there gonna need two hands to do this but the gauge screws back in there and we're ready to rock again the plan now is to build some what they call sub rails which will be the edges of the floor and it will just tie the whole body together so we can then do away with all this temporary bracing and that is what these 50 mil by 25 mil box sections are for that i just picked up if you look down here what i'm thinking is this gap between the door and the bottom of the cow is just under 50 mil i'm going to run the sub rails close to the door all the way down the length of the car and then the plan is to build just like a sill almost just to finish off that gap and that sill will then be welded to that inner sub rail the car i just not confident it's all square so my plan is i've got this eight before sheet of hardboard i'm going to lift the body off place it on the hardboard and then mark all the positions of the floor, lift the body up again, and I'll be able to tell exactly how the sub rail should be bent to follow the shape of the car. I'm not sure if any of that makes sense, but you'll see, it'll become clear. So you might be able to see what I'm trying to do here. Obviously this eight before piece of hardboard is square. So I've positioned the body on it and I've just got some key points of the body. This one here is this inside metal and the back. And I've just tried to obviously put it equal distance all the way around. So that way when I come to build my sub rails, I can just check they're all kind of symmetrical i mean the body isn't perfect by any means this side is wider than the other side of course i'm trying to marry a fiberglass half a body with a metal half i'm thinking i'm going to have a pie cut there bend it in a pie cut there and maybe a pie cut there still need to trim those old body mounts back a bit more so I can get a nice straight line. Clean up this fiberglass someone's added in here. Cut that out of the way so that matches that side so I can draw a good straight line. And then once I've done my markings with the body there, I'll lift the body up. These are all the markings I've taken from inside the car. And I measured all the places. I need to pie cut this metal rail. I've done that on both sides actual measurements are in pencil here so what i've done in the thick marker pen i've literally gone in between taking the average of both at least i know that way that the car floor is going to be symmetrical make my life much easier and you know it should look right in the end the sub rail total is two three five five mil I'm gonna cut those to that length and then I am gonna do the pie cuts with my death wheel, lay the metal tube on this backing board and just get the angles right. I've done my pie cuts. I can already feel it's quite flimsy. It's wanting to bend well where I need it to. So I'm just gonna put this on the board now and just see if I can get it to uh, follow the lines I've drawn. So I've just thrown a couple of tacks 
on the pie cuts. I haven't done that last one just because I'm not sure quite how the end of the car works out. I just put a few blocks of wood on this hardboard just to stop it moving around too much. There's a bit of flexibility in these sub rails. So let's just slide it under and just get an initial idea. And like I say, I'll probably have to just trim out some more in either corner there. First drop down of the body over the sub rails. Generally, it's looking pretty good. I went nicely underneath those cutout parts. Yeah, that's really happy. I can even put a little tack weld on that existing angle iron just to hold that in place. But I'm just really pleased because with these sub rails being symmetrical, when I come to make my floor pans, they'd be much easier to do. If I make them in halves, I'll be able to use the same template for either side. I left these rear legs a bit too long so I can cut those back. Right, I ended up pulling out a lot of the old fiberglass. I've really just hacked out that wood. I'm just gonna end up replacing all this wood. As you can see, it's not even stuck to the sides of the body. I'm not sure what's happened there, where it's, how it's come away, but I think I'm just gonna end up ripping all that cross metal out there as well and re-fiberglassing that back in for strength. I'm gonna put the body and sub rails now back on the frame. We'll get a better idea of how it's all gonna look. I had to cut out this front cross member. It was just about a couple of inches too far forward and hit on the bell housing of the engine. And I think what I'm gonna to have to do is probably bolt up my gearbox to the engine and I know this is going to be in the way this cross member so I'll probably have to brace up the rest of the chassis and then I think once I know exactly where those are those cross supports I can take the sub rails out and just fully weld everything up and then put the body on again for the last time but this is all for another day because I've put a lot of hours into this already this week that's it for this episode of Cobweb Garage so excited we've got this model a body now i do want to ask if anyone knows i think that this front cowl this steel cowl is actually off a car which would have had a roof on i don't think this cowl is actually from a roadster originally just because of the details and way this windshield's going to work so if there's any experts out there yeah please comment below and let me know what you think we're going to run this anyway and I've got some posts which I'm going to use and make the wind shield so I think all's good. We've got the new radiator which is sort of semi-mounted in position. We trimmed down that front radiator cowl as well which looks really good now. I think that the lines are really nice and of course we made some progress by fitting these sub rails which is going to tie this whole body together and stop it sort of moving I hope and the doors will shut properly. Obviously more work to do on those sub rails. That is a job for another day. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and we have merchandise which we ship all around the world. I'll put a link below. See you on the next one. Cheers.